today I got the 300SX dug out of the attic or the the stash yeah out of the stash and uh, we're working on building a Bob Bob is backflip on a budget or a lot of people will think of it as uh, there's aftermarket ski holes you can buy called Bob's um, but originally they're all derived from a 300SX and uh, it generally just means one of these 300s with a big pump and a big engine doing a backflip on a budget so that's what we're gonna try to do with this thing uh, got a Cali 140 millimeter pump that we're gonna try to fit in here uh, and a Yamaha 701 so and we'll try to get the trim nozzle set up on it so that we can do backflips it's not insane it's not gonna be an insane flat water setup but off of some of the bigger waves we get out here we'll probably be able to do some backflips and uh, so multiple ways you can do this a lot of people will cut an entire pump cavity out of somewhere and glass it into this I don't think that's necessary but I'll, sh I'll, I'll even I'll show you what you could do so because I had this I have this option laying around to show you what I could do so this is the back half of a 650 that I destroyed so that pump tunnel is all there and a lot of people would use something like that to uh, do the pump swap on the 300 but I don't think it's necessary and I'll show you why now this is an old tiger shark intake grate I found around here I was thinking about using it, it has an integrated pump shoe you can see with not too much work it could go in there I would have to bandsaw the shoe part and then it would be able to fit inside there and uh, it actually is about perfect for this pump area but the bottom would set too low if I had it up where it needed to be with the pump resting here the bottom would poke out the bottom by about an inch so that took that option off the table otherwise this would have been kind of a good way to go but um, what I am doing is I'm going to be using this 750 intake grate and um, this is a 750 SX pump that I have for mock-up it's had the ears all cut up for another project but this will be fine for mocking it up just to kind of show okay oh. all right so uh first thing i had to do is i had to knock out these little mounting bosses out of here this was really old tiny pump so i got those out of the way and now i have all this room to kind of mount and play with the position of the 140 millimeter pump that we're putting in there we've got a 750sx intake grate and then this pump is just wherever the bolt holes would make it line up the front bolts right in like you would think a stock thing would just bolt right up and so this is where it would position the pump after uh after those little bosses are knocked out of the way so it can sit up there tight and so really if I just take care of all the mounting so that it bolts, if I just devise a way to get it to mount up the pump right in here, um, then I should just have to notch the ride plate kind of like that. And then, then just make some sort of pump shoe to go around all this trickery in here. And then, um, you know glue it all in done so i like that the idea is to cosmetically kind of keep this stock at least is the idea for now so um i don't think i'm gonna be putting footholds in it maybe some straps because that's easier yeah maybe maybe i'll do footholds because i'm supposed to try to do a backflip on it right but i think i'll keep the pole stock and put some handlebars on it 
spot really keep it mostly the same as it is now it'll be a sleeper right i don't know i kind of just i want to do what's easiest and i think it would be kind of cool to keep it simple but yeah so i'll show you too kind of what the engine layout looks like we got our neighbor scooby-doo here hey scoob oh no scoob Come on, Scoob, we need your help. This is what it looks like inside here. It's all oily and it's dirty and I have not cleaned it. Yeah. So the battery tray is back here. I think I'm going to move the battery from here somewhere in there. And then these little bosses for the motor mounts. I'm just going to put some flat plate on top of there and then drill and tap it for a Yamaha setup. And I think I'll be able to do it without cutting the mounts down. I think I think these are lower, low enough that I will be able to just uh, get metal that's the right thickness and then um, straight tap some regular engine mounts on there and it will work perfectly. Uh, the drive shaft carrier uses like this weird clamp on setup for the stock drive shaft. So basically I'm just gonna be cutting this whole thing off and then putting the mounting plate, just uh, gluing or epoxying some nut plate inserts in there for a bulkhead bearing, which I'll show you what that looks like. So yeah, I will be having to put some inserts and redo this face here so that this drive shaft carrier just mounts there. And then uh, I might have to do some sort of custom drive shaft work probably. And uh, so back here is where the stock water box goes. As you can see, there's kind of a weird tunnel back there for it. So I think we'll just be making some sort of custom water box. This is the stock exhaust hose. It's very small, so probably gonna block that off and then just uh put a hole through the back end into just out out this guy for a regular exhaust size this is where it normally dumps but we might maybe we'll just use that for something else like the trim cable but uh and then I'll, I'll try, I got an engine I can put in there and kind of show you how it might look. So this is a 760 that I have. This is just for mock-up. We're just going to be using a stock 701 with a stock 701 pipe. So the pipe will go straight down, wrap around the back, straight down the front. And so I figure we'll just run a, a tube going down and then straight back into a water box back here and then somewhere around the bottom or around the top to that side and then straight out the back. But uh, it'll keep it simple. And uh, yeah, then I'll just have to worry about some control stuff. But that should be pretty cool. Pretty cool, simple. All right guys, so I got it flipped over now and we're gonna do some more trying uh, to finesse this this 750 pump into this guy. Um, and the reason I'm going this route with it is this is what I've deemed the easiest way to get the big pump in here. So um, I'll show you what I got mocked up and tell you what I'm doing. First, I'll tell you why they don't have any 300SX parts on vintagejetski.com. Because there's not really any. You just got to retrofit stuff from different skis in there. I mean, sure, there was like three aftermarket parts made for these things in the 80s. And they're long gone and nobody makes that anymore. But yeah, what you got to do is you basically, you know, grinding and drilling and making brackets to put stuff from different skis in these things. And uh, that's, uh, that's what you do. 750 pump I have. It's got the, these mounting wings on this guy are trimmed on it. So this pump was used in a 550, 750 pump conversion kit. 
and uh, you can see the tunnel is kind of got a chamfer on these edges so I mean it's easy to mock this one up and I'm actually I think I'm gonna use this one and I'm just gonna put some bolt holes in where they're all you know put in like crap by me but I only got to do this once and then uh, let's see so this uh, this guy for the steering cable whatever this nut um, it was big right this is what it was come on I can't see the camera screen so I can't see what I, you see but uh, I tried grinding an edge and I found this guy. This is another piece out of my 550-750 pump conversion. You don't necessarily need it for sure to do that. So um, I just stole that guy. And it gave me just enough room to get this guy in here. And I have decided that basically I want to have this mounted flush with this flat surface. Uh, you can see these bosses here were the old nubs for the uh, the pump, the uh, the stock pump on it. So I have tested it, and uh, when I set it in there like that, and uh, I get the drive shaft in there, it seems to be centered where uh, where it comes through the bulkhead. So that should give me minimal bind with that setup and uh so basically this is just a 750 intake grate that uh i traded jason for but uh basically with this pump moved all the way as far forward as it can go it'll bolt right up and then this is the ride plate I'm just going to have to notch it around it. And then I'm going to have to make some sort of custom pump shoe and that comes back and seals the tunnel up back around the pump. And then also uh, I'm going to have to, let's see if I can get down in there so you can actually see. But this uh this pump goes you know about a little more than a quarter inch above the uh the in inlet of the pump so i'm going to have to do some grinding here and and blend in that transition and make it work but um to me it sounds a little bit easier than hacking this whole pump tunnel apart and hacking the whole ski up um, because as you know I'm just deciding to do this the easiest and cheapest way here is a trim nozzle that I have laying around as you can see there's not enough clearance for it to really do what it's gonna need to do so basically I'm going to have to trim this lip um, not sure how much exactly but another option I have too is uh, I can uh, take this nozzle and extend it out a couple inches and uh, then re-weld bosses and tap this uh, this this uh, hinge or whatever you want to call it further out to where I have more motion range and there's less of the tray of the ski in the way um, so if anybody has any ideas about that and how that affects how these things, uh, work, let me know. Um, I guess I'm gonna try to have adjustable, uh, steering plate on this thing that, that makes the steering as twitchy as possible, or, uh, you know, if I can just change it to where it needs to be, because I know people like the twitchy steering on these, uh, little skis for their freestyle stuff so I'll try that and then if I hate it I'll be able to move it um but yeah I don't I don't know I might I might I have a couple of different nozzle options I might use this one I might use a different one but 
I'm not gonna spend much money. I'm, all I gotta do is buy uh, just a super long bicycle cable or something and that should do what it needs to do. So, um, let's see. I guess that's it for that. You know, this I would think is gonna be the easy part, so I'm doing it last. And uh, let's see. The impeller, I'm not sure what impeller I'm using yet, but it's gonna be, I'm probably gonna cut down some big pig short impeller like I did on the bullet. Uh, some, you know, like an STX or something. I don't know, I, I measured that swirl pr prop out of that ski and it was like a 10, 10, 17 or something. So something short like that. Um, and it, it'll be cheap, so. I guess what I'm doing next is I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna get the transition here, see what it looks like underneath. And I'm gonna turn the vacuum on and hopefully I don't get as dusty and hopefully I don't ruin my beautiful brand new vintage jet ski shirt. But you know how it is, you just gotta do it. All right, eh? Eh, look at that. Look at that. Okay, it's gross. But I did. Check it out. So, now I uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll clear it out with a little bit more precise of a grinder. Uh, an angle grinder. I'll show you, show you what we got in the Jet Ski Brothers cabinet. Um, probably use this guy. Something like this, and uh, we'll get some of the weird ragged edges out of here. It's not going to be perfect, but I'll just lay a bunch of glass and epoxy over it. And uh, I, I'm thinking what I'll do is like I'm thinking about just like glassing in some more SMC off of another piece of ski around uh, this back edge and uh, building it up. I think I can get it around uh, around this stuff so I have a little bit of an access. But uh, what I don't get, I'll just fill in with uh, silicone, I guess, and should seal it up. And then I gotta figure out a pump shoe setup. I could buy one, could make one. Uh, nothing I buy is just gonna go right in, so. I'll see what I got laying around, but uh, yeah, you get to kind of see a little bit of the process here. I don't think a ton of people show you how it is when you put a big pump in one of these. I, I mean, I've seen so many pictures online of people cutting up like a 750SX to put the, the tunnel in one of these, and I don't know, I, I think it's kind of bad. To, I, I don't think it's good to cut up a 750SX. Um... You know, I feel like there's millions of 550s. If you gotta cut one of those up, whatever. Try and, I, I don't know. I don't like cutting up stand-ups, but yeah. Uh, you've seen me do a 650 and you've seen me throw a, a 550 off a cliff. But um, yeah, for these, I don't think that there's really any any reason to cut up a, another stand-up for one. But you can, if you if you really want to. A lot of you have been asking how old I am, and uh, I'm 48, so now you know. I'm 48 years old. Do I look it, huh? Now you know, 48. Oldest jet ski brother. Look at my gray hair. All right, getting old. All right, up to the chopping block. Need a little piece of piece of ski this should do this is all off the cuff let's see this is a little template test piece I made out of plastic uh, I'll show you later what it's from you'll maybe laugh but uh, yeah so this top thin part don't really need that so I think I'm just gonna go something like 
the, the little template piece that I made was off of this uh, piece of a Corvette that I had laying around. Right, because I just have that type of stuff laying around. Uh, I basically screwed a few pieces of this in that little corner. <laughs> what I what I've kind of started doing, I totally changed it up. It's it's this is kind of like yeah, I figured out what I was doing as I was doing it and but anyway, I basically got like four layers of this stuff at the top and two on the bottom to tilt this at the angle I wanted and then this is just bondo to fill up the gap cuz you see how uh Basically, this whole face was tilted that way, and we had to. We got to close up the gap here. So, um, yeah. At this point, my plan is to just get this to kind of be flush, you know, around this whole flange, and then I probably will just do it like that and put a buttload of silicone around the outside in you know in these cracks to just seal it up um i might come up with something different but that's definitely an easy way to do it and uh then you know we got the we got to get the pump shoe custom in there but um also yeah after i get this set up i'll finish grinding this out and uh i'll lay some some glass over it and uh i'll let it cover up over over that so just so we get some nice reinforcement over the top and uh, then it, it should be pretty decent how it fits so you can kind of kind of see how it's coming together and this is not like not anything I put a huge amount of thought into so I just kind of saw that it might be easier to do this than to glass in the whole bottom of a ski. Alright, so now I am going for it and notching out this here ride plate. So this is the back, this part of where the intake grate will bolt on. And yeah, notching it out. Yeah. Okay guys, haven't pulled the camera out in a while. Can't remember what I didn't film. Uh, have a look. So, we're, come on, come on, we got it trimmed up, and let's see, so, some gaps in there still, but at least the faces kind of seem like they loosely line up that way. Um, yeah, now I, I basically am deciding, do I want to try to put some sort of backing around this to, uh, keep the silicone in place? I don't know. I think I'm going to rummage through my stuff and see if I can find the actual seal that's supposed to go on here that I'm not going to use, but I might use for mock-up. So I'm looking at it. How does this look with the actual seal in there? Uh, I, I'll tell you, I just don't want to do any more making this crap. I think I'm just doing it. I'm just going to pack that baby full of silicone around here when I put it in. And I'm going to be like, yeah, it better be good. Because it, it should be fine. It just sucks to take that crap apart if you have to swap a prop, but... It's going to do because I just, yeah, yeah, this is, this is Bob style right here. This is how you do it. This is Bob style. And I had this idea of making a little flat stuffer in there. This is what the, uh, there's a part called the Pro Watercraft Racing Intake Stuffer, which basically makes the intake track shaped like that and I'm thinking if I do that it'll be a lot less gangly and weird shaped and it'll probably work a little better than 
then uh, if I just throw some fabric on there and try to get a loose shape out of it. I, I think this looks like it would be better, so off to get some some ski material. This blade sucks. There we go. Not much battery left, so this might be the last thing you get to see, but got this guy, boom. This little piece of pipe. Epoxy this all together, and uh, voila. Check it out, we're gluing. So, guys, what do we say? What do we say? We say go buy some, do something smart for once in your life. Go buy some jet ski parts from vintagejetski.com and use the promo code Jetski Brothers. All right, come on, thousand percent cool. We weren't, we're not done, we got more. All right, let's check it out. Look at that, look at that, look at her, look at her. So yeah, just ground that little pipe off, flush with this thing, buttload of, well, yeah, quite a quite a bit of epoxy on there. Uh, just kind of got, got, I don't know, a couple of sheets of fabric on there, but yep, yeah, it's just the beginning, so. But now I got a base to go off of, and uh, it does not look too bad. Man, I feel like I hear a jet ski in the background, but I don't think there is anybody out there. But it actually looks pretty doggone good. Does it? Yep. Okay, I'm looking at the camera screen to make sure. Yeah, it does look pretty good. Uh, if you guys have any ideas for this thing, let me know. Um, maybe you'll get the video up in time that'll actually help me. And also, make sure to check out vintagejetski.com, promo code Jetski Brothers. Ooh.